Okay. Arlington, what, what do you think about Brexit? What is your point of view? Yeah. Of that? Thank you. I mean, I, I have the belief that Brexit has been a mistake. Though, of course, the vote was a democratic process. I think the offer of a referendum on an issue such as should Britain leave Europe was always going to end with enormous disappointment on both sides. And though many people claim that a vote 52 to 48 is a huge vote, in ordinary circumstances, yes. But in this particular instance, uh, it is not a majority at all, really. Because fundamentally it means half of Britain does not want this to happen, and the other half does. So those who are claiming, and this is so important, I think, politically, this question about leaving Europe has for decades been an issue for several people within the Conservative uh, Party, political parties in the United Kingdom. Um, they never saw Europe as a place that should dictate, quote unquote, um, how Britain should rule itself in terms of its laws, in terms of its immigration policy, etc. And in fact, that imperialist viewpoint was what I think led to the Prime Minister David Cameron feeling such pressure from within his party that he gave in to, I would call it, a gamble as to whether the country would vote to leave Europe or not. I think he didn't believe mm -hmm. that Britain would vote to leave Europe. Yeah, but... <laughs> but it has. Yeah, yeah. I think the second thing that troubles me about it uh, is that this divisiveness, and it almost can be described as planned divisiveness, or simply an error, an error of judgment. But what it has done, it's divided our country. It has caused people who have come to live in Britain and who have lived in Britain for generations to feel the heat of hatred and division and not just raw racism, but, but actual taking people taking the opportunity to be, to be public about their hatred. Whilst before Brexit, People might have held back and said not a word, but believe their hatred. Now they've been emboldened, not only through that process, um, being free but to express that. yeah, but where people have seen uh, politicians leading countries who are also speaking hatred. That's that's the second and perhaps most destructive element or result of the Brexit situation in the UK. I think the third is the fear, the enormous fear that it has created. Paulina has probably mentioned several Polish people leaving Britain because of fear, because they do not know what their futures would be. Mm -hmm. um, and legitimately, that's a legitimate right to say, why should we stay here if we do not believe that? British people want us to be here. Yeah. And that's not only for Polish people, that is for immigrants who have been living in Britain for years and years yeah. and years. Um, so it has created a vacuum into which all kinds of crazy things and mm -hmm. thoughts and ideas and actions reside. Mm -hmm. And the effect of them has been uh, crime, it's been, it's been you know, violence, uh, it's been name calling. It's it's been all kinds of ugly things for which Britain doesn't stand, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think I think the whole Brexit question now resides around the new prime minister who says that he will leave Europe on the 31st of October. I think he's mistaken, grossly mistaken, because until and unless Europe is willing to say okay, we will give you what you want, conservatives, and those others who are, are your skeptics, then we will go and leave it all to you. That is not going to happen. If it does, though, 
just perchance that it does mm -hmm. happen, that Britain leaves Europe without an agreement as to how economically, politically, uh, socially to engage, is going to have an almighty uh, uh, destruct, destroying effect on the lives of British people for some time to come. Those people who did vote to leave but did not know what the consequences of leaving would be. Mm -hmm. And there are vast numbers of people who could not even imagine that we would be at this point today and not knowing what will happen. Nobody knows what will happen. Nobody knows what will okay. happen. Uh, what do you think about uh, people here in our region? Yeah, because uh, it is not your first time in Poland, in mm -hmm. Ustroń. I want to ask you, what do you think about uh, our region and uh, people who live here? Well, there are two thoughts that in my coming here over the last few years. Um, I've been impressed by people's, number one, people's uh, respect and honor. Um, I felt walking around with Polina, um, speaking to her family, friends, uh, and just people in the street. There is this, there's a dignity, a quiet dignity, uh, that says, well, you look different. We don't know you, but hello, welcome, mm -hmm. without uttering the words, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. There's a sense um, that the dignity of the people in this region and the honor that characterizes Polish people, I felt that. But that's probably just about me, you know. Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. I think the other thing I feel is that um, the 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 spectacle of a stranger, uh, of a black person walking the streets of Ustroń, um, has been for many people um, uh, exactly that the spectacle. I, felt I've been the center of attention all the time. And you like and, that? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Okay. That's good. But I think, good for I, I think those two things uh, were uppermost in my mind o over the period of time that I've been here. And of course, um, I'm one of these people who like to walk the streets and say hello. I've been brought up with that as a kid in Barbados, in the Caribbean. If you walk the streets as a kid and didn't say hello to an adult, when you return home, your parents would teach you a lesson. Okay. Okay. You didn't know how they did that, but they knew. So that's something I do. Paulina doesn't like it very much because she, <laughs> she thinks that um, people are saying, well, what do you want from us by saying hello? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's just, a, it's just a habitual thing that you speak to people and people find this level of humanity by, by which we can engage. And the cultural context for being silent and quiet and dignified and moving without looking either way um, becomes even more beautiful when I say hello to you or good morning. Mm, your Polish is very good, okay. <laughs> uh, I will ask Paulina about the music in your life, because uh, I think this is the important uh, part of your life. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, yes, I'm, I'm a trained musician. Uh, and uh, it's my just... second calling, yes. Mm -hmm. so, um, Pracuję i w kościele, i w muzyce, mm -hmm. można tak powiedzieć. Mm -hmm. A jakoś e... udaje się połączyć te dwie sfery? Udaje mi się, um, musi mi się udawać, bo takie jest, um, taka jest zasada w kościele luterańskim w Anglii, że musisz mieć dwa zawody, żeby się I cały utrzymać. czas tak jest. Tak. Mm -hmm. Więc jakby y, to mi pomaga i przeszkadza oczywiście, bo to jest niewygodna druga praca y, artystyczna y, i dalsze podróżowanie i nieregularne próby i, i czasami w Wpada jakaś tam ilość występów w ciągu miesiąca, czasami trzy miesiące nie wpada nic. Mhm, ale śpiewasz, nie ma się śpiewać. Regularnie, ale, ale się odbywa to. Mhm. Znam coraz więcej muzyków, pianistów, którzy mnie asystują i robimy coś razem. Z ostatnich projektów śpiewałam dla 
szeryfa, jest taka funkcja szeryf of Nottinghamshire. Mhm. E, szeryf Nottingham, to nie tylko w bajce o Robin Hoodzie, ale jest taka funkcja, to są reprezentanci królowej, e, którzy dbają o, o różne właśnie e, uroczystości w dużych miastach, e, międzyuniwersyteckie, między policją a sądem, między, między sądem a e, ratuszem. Dużo takich odbywa się eventów i, i zostałam zaangażowana do współpracy właśnie e, e, umuzyczniając, mm -hmm. czyli cały czas na muzyka i śpiewasz, tak? tych eventów i, i, i mm -hmm. bardzo to lubię, jest to... I śpiewasz i grasz, czy śpiewasz? Śpiewam, y, śpiewam, mm -hmm. śpiewasz śpiewam solo, tak, klasykę. Nie, nie śpiewam zbyt dużo opery dzisiaj, mimo że to była moja podstawowa rzecz przy, przy dyplomie, ale śpiewam dużo innej, troszkę lżejszej można powiedzieć, ale klasycznej muzyki, dużo kościelnej muzyki, e, trochę chorałowej, nadal śpiewam poezję, no. e, e, ale w takim trybie właśnie klasycznym. I, to się podoba. I... A zapytam się na koniec ostatnich rzeczy, nie artystycznych, ale związanych z duszpasterstwem. To co robiłaś w Krakowie? Ponieważ rozdawałaś komunię. Jak <grym> wytłumaczy tak, tak wszystkim, tak? może coś tak bardziej um, profesjonalnie. Byłam zaproszona do Krakowa na międzynarodową e, konferencję ekumeniczną e, przez e, braci z kościoła rzymskokatolickiego e, z Kielc, z Lublina, z Bielska z Warszawy yy, i przez yy, ekumeniczne stowarzyszenie z yy, Niemiec yy, i miałam szczególną radość i przywilej wziąć udział w tej dwutygodniowej konferencji yy, ponad 200 ludzi z różnych stron yy, Europy. Kościoły katolickie, kościoły protestanckie yy, próbują robić coś yy, razem, yy, ponad podziałami. Yy, w świecie, w którym niekoniecznie yy, jest po drodze wszystkim kościołom ze sobą w Polsce, która promuje większościowy kościół, którym jest oczywiście kościół katolicki. Także było to przepiękne wydarzenie pokazujące, że kościoły mogą zejść razem, mogą rozmawiać o ważnych rzeczach, o problemach i mogą razem przeżywać nabożeństwo i msze i że możemy mimo różnic się szanować. Piękne słowa. Mhm. A co z komunią, zapytam? Komunię udzielałam w kościele ewangelickim, gdzie miałam dodatkowych kilka nabożeństw. Skorzystano z mojej obecności i zaproszono mnie na te nabożeństwa, więc tam ich sztu i komunii udzielałam. Prowadziłam sakrament sztu i sakrament komunii. Oczywiście nie prowadziłam tej komunii podczas mszy, ale brałam udział w wszach, na które byłam zaproszona przez braci i przyjaciół z Kościoła Katolickiego I, i mieliśmy wspólne czytania i modlitwy, także robiliśmy dużo rzeczy wspólnie właśnie razem, a oni także przychodzili na nabożeństwo luterańskie e, i też mieliśmy wspólne zadania. E, także bardzo w, świetnie, obficie ten czas spędziliśmy. I ja mam nadzieję, że tym zakończymy. Bardzo dziękuję e, za rozmowę. Paulino, Arlington, it was nice to meet you. Thank you for uh, that we may uh, speak, talk, yeah, Thank you. Uh, in English. Thank you for having uh, sorry for my English, yeah. Your English is But uh, I will uh, teach you Polish for some day, yeah, and Please. maybe uh, you will teach me English. Absolutely. Okay. Be happy to do that. <laughs> Dziękuję bardzo. Naszymi gośćmi byli Paulina Kowiczka i Arlington Trotman. Thank you. Thank you.